Hello everyone. The startup scene in India has really taken off. We've seen three times growth in the last three years and expecting three times growth in the coming three years by 2020. In a recent report by Startup Blink, India ranks 17 out of 100 countries in terms of the quality of startups, the business environment provided to startups, and the number of startups that have mushroomed in India. The government is very interested in promoting startups. It has, in, in the overall initiative of the Startup India scheme, launched multiple smaller initiatives, including all abiding portal, which caters to startups and promotes the ecosystem. One part is taxes, which we are going to deal with in this video. Myself, Jiga Sayer, Partner Tax and Regulatory Services at BDO. And my colleague. Hi, I'm Rajesh Thakkar, partner in tax and regulatory service at BDO. To begin with, let me uh, you know take you through what are the benefits that a startup uh, in our country in India is entitled to. Let's start with the income tax benefits. Uh, Section 80 IAC of the Income Tax Act uh, allows a startup to enjoy a tax holiday of 100% for a period of three uh, consecutive years out of the seven years since its incorporation. Number two, uh, section 54 GB, uh, where, where an, an individual or an HUF earns any capital gains from sale of a residential property or, or a land, it can invest that money into, into a, an eligible startup and therefore claim exemption from the uh, liability to pay capital gains tax. There are certain conditions which are, which are attached. Number one, that the investment should result in the, the assessee uh, getting at least 25% shareholding in the startup. And number two, the startup should invest that money into, into purchase of a new machinery, plant and machinery, within a period of 12 months from, the, from receiving the concentration. Number three, section 79, which allows the company to carry forward uh, brought forward losses. Uh, in the event that there is a change in shareholding of more than 49% in case of a closely held company, ideally in a typical situation, these losses will lapse for the company. But this rule does not apply to a startup, which effectively means that in case a startup, in case the shareholders of a startup were to sell more than 49% of their shareholding, the losses will not lapse for the startup. Over and above this, there are other regulatory benefits which are also prescribed by the DPIIT. Uh, there is a self-certification by a startup in respect of compliances under the labor laws and the environmental laws. Uh, second, there is a, a, a fast track uh, you know, patent application process uh, facility which is available and also a cost subsidy in terms of the, you know, the application money that a startup has to pay. Uh, thirdly, uh, there, are, there are these relaxation in the, in the form of uh, issuing stock options uh, to the promoters or directors, which is ideally or typically not available to, uh, to, a, to any other kind of a private company. Uh, fourth is, uh, again, issue of sweat equity shares, which is capped at 25% for any other company. But as far as startup is concerned, that cap is you know, ex uh, extended to 50%. Uh, then there is there is also a provision for fast track insolvency, uh, wherein in case a startup wants to wind up its business activities, uh, you can do so uh, within the window within a period of 90 days. Uh, so these are some of the uh, benefits which are also prescribed by the DPIIT, other than the tax benefits which I spoke of.